Hi, I'm Marshall Brain, and welcome back to the Time Capsule Video Project. In this episode, we're going to talk about how they build a house in 2010, or in this case, actually 2009, because that's when this house was built. And I believe that in even 20 years, this is going to look completely different because the way houses are built today, it takes months and hundreds of people and it's almost a totally manual process and this has got to become automated in you know the next 20 years much less than the next 200 years so we started this process by buying a piece of land and we bought a lot in the Lockmere subdivision in Cary North Carolina and we bought it about three weeks before Johnny and Ian were born and we didn't actually start construction until 2009 for a variety of reasons the first thing that happens is a crew comes in with a backhoe and they dig trenches that will hold concrete that will be the foundation of the house. And You can see the trenches here. Our house is on something called helical piers and you can see the tops of them in this picture. They are steel beams screwed into the ground and there's 56 of them to keep the foundation stable for this house. And then around those they build these wooden forms that you see here and put in this steel reinforcing rod to make the concrete much stronger. The concrete arrives in a cement mixing truck and it goes into this other truck called a concrete pumper which pumps it through this extendable arm down to a tube and that they use to direct the concrete into the trenches. So it's going to cover the rebar and the helical piers and form this incredibly strong concrete beam. For this house they used 10 truckloads and each truck of concrete held 10 cubic yards of concrete. So it took about 100 cubic yards of concrete to pour the footings for this house. That concrete pumping truck is actually a piece of automation that they are using today. They used to do this part using wheelbarrows that carried the concrete by hand from the cement mixing truck. When they got done, the kids and I wrote the date in the concrete, March 6, 2009. Next they delivered about 25 pallets of cinder blocks and they're going to use these cinder blocks to form the walls of the crawl space and they put them together by mixing mortar that is layered between the blocks to act like glue that holds them in place. So a crew of masons came in and used all these cinder blocks to make the walls and these piers you see in the middle of the crawl space. And this is the foundation of the house. On top of the cinder block wall they bolt down a layer of pressure treated wood and then they start laying the floor joists right on top of that. This is going to be the first floor of the house. So what you see here are these kind of wooden I-beams and they either rest on top of the cinder block walls or they rest on top of these beams that they built out of 2 by 12 lumber. They nailed sheets of plywood onto the floor joists to create the first floor and then the framing crew came in and started framing the house. And you can see in these pictures they built this house out of 2 by 4 pieces of pine lumber that they cut to the right length and then they strengthen it by putting sheets of plywood on the outside of the 2 by 4s and that provides the stability for the structure. And the framing crew spent about two weeks doing all of this work by hand. It's basically, you know, hand saws, circular saws that cut the pieces of lumber and a nail gun that nails them together. And in a couple of weeks, you have what looks a lot like a house. Here's a kind of tour of the inside of the house. So this is the going to be the kitchen, and in front of David is the keeping room or the sunroom. This is the family room with a set of windows that look over the lake. Um, you come across to the left and there's going to be a kind of cabinet there and then a fireplace to its left and another cabinet to that left and then straight ahead of David is the foyer for the house and the staircase going up to the left. Once they got done with the first floor, then they put down another layer of plywood and started on the second floor. And then above that, they put the roof. And you can see what that roof structure looks like. Uh, this is the upstairs. We call this the rec room. And you can see the roof is just made out of pieces of 2 by 6 or 2 by 8 or 2 by 10 lumber. 
they put in all the windows and doors they put tar paper on the roof and then they wrap the whole house in this plastic called Tyvek that acts as a house wrap and let me just say that the house was built by John Whelan Holmes before they could put up the bricks they had to put the trim and the eaves and that's the soffit and the fascia boards here you can see they've done it on the left side and they haven't done it on the right side yet and this is a rot resistant material called hardy plank so now the construction process can split into two threads you can have people working on the outside and people working on the inside simultaneously so on the outside you had the roofers and the masons who were putting up shingles and putting up bricks and the brick work was amazing to watch they used something like 17,000 bricks to build this house they came in pallets of about 45 pallets of bricks and they put up all this scaffolding and the bricks went up in a couple of weeks they you know they would just keep at it every day and the roofers worked simultaneously with the masons so the roof went on at the same time once the roofers and the masons were done the house was dried in once the bricks were finished they brought in many many truckloads of dirt to raise the level of the lot and then they also started on the front porch meanwhile on the inside of the house you have the electricians and the plumbers and the security system guys and the people who put in the fireplace and the HVAC guys putting in wires and pipes and ducts and security system wiring and the fireplace and the ductwork for the chimney for the fireplace and they're trying to put in everything that needs to go in before they can put up the sheetrock so this is all the stuff that's inside the walls and once they're done with that set of tasks then the insulation goes in and the insulation happens right before they start the sheetrock so this is fiberglass bat insulation uh, crew comes in they did all this in one day next is the sheetrock they delivered about 500 sheets four feet by 12 feet and they put it all up in just a couple days it was amazing how fast this went and the house starts to look like a house when they get done next the sheetrock crew takes this stuff that's a liquid plaster called mud and they use that to go over all the seams and all the screws they use to put up the sheetrock to make it a smooth surface so when they get done this is pretty much ready for paint to start once the sheet rockers were done then two guys came in and they put up all the kitchen cabinets and all the bathroom cabinets and the utility room cabinets in just a couple of days next they started on the interior trim work so a crew came in and they put in all the molding they put in all the handrails and the balusters for the steps they put in all the interior doors they also laid the hardwood floor around this time and in this shot of the dining room right here you can see they put this cardboard over the hardwood floor to protect it on the outside of the house they started putting in the screened in porch and the deck in back and then on the inside they started doing tiling they start by gluing down this concrete backer board and then they glue the tile right onto that backer board and this was all done by a father-son team that came in and in just a couple days it was amazing how fast they put all this tile in. they did all the bathrooms that the house has and a couple other special areas a crew came and put in the kitchen countertops these are polished granite like I talked about in the third episode outside they finished the screen porch and the deck next is paint a crew of about a dozen painters came in first they covered everything they didn't want to paint with a thin plastic and that was the handrails the counters things like that they shot the entire interior with white primer with a spray gun here you can see they used about 75 gallons of primer on this house and then they started with the wall color and they're really painting three things here they're painting the wall color which is mostly beige in this house white which is a trim color and then the actual trim is painted with this glossy white paint that makes it stand out and then they also came in and finished the handrails 
Next, the crew came in and they did all the trim work around the fireplace and they built all the built-ins, the cabinets and bookshelves and stuff that went into this house. With the painting done, the electricians came back out and they put in the fuse box and all the outlets and light switches and final wiring for the house. The insulation crew came back out and they blew all this fluffy white insulation into the attic and they also put in bat insulation down in the crawl space of the house so the house was now completely insulated. Next they came out and poured the driveway and it's made out of concrete poured on a gravel base so they put up some wooden forms to hold the concrete and then brought in several truckloads of concrete to make the driveway. Meanwhile inside the house the electricians were putting up all the lights and the plumbers were putting in all the faucets for all the sinks in the house. A crew came in and finished the hardwood floors and put the polyurethane on that would protect it. And then another crew came in and did all the carpeting. And they put in all the carpet in the entire house in about one day. It was a long day, but still one day they did all the carpet. The appliances went in, the stove, oven, dishwasher. And then a guy came out and did the backsplash, which is this tile behind the countertop here in the kitchen. They put in the real front door. Here they haven't taken the protective film off yet. And they also did all the bedding plants uh, as part of the landscaping. So they put in a bunch of little plants that uh, are supposed to make the house look nice. And you can see them here in front of the house. They'll all grow a lot bigger over time. At this point, the house went through a bunch of final inspections with the town of Kerry, and it got a clean bill of health so they could plug in an electric meter and turn on the power. This meant all the lights started working, the heating and air conditioning started working. This was a real house at this point. We kept a daily journal all through the construction of this house to keep track of what happened each day. This is the page of the journal where we're looking at the short list of things left to do on the house so we could move in and you can see there was very little left at this point. The house stopped being a construction site the day they put the sod out. So they brought in all these pallets of sod and a crew rolled it all out in one day and watered it and Presto, it wasn't a, a lot in a construction site. It was a real house in the neighborhood at that point. What's left is touch-up and cleaning. So a guy came in with these waxes and paints and touched up any dings on the cabinets. The crew came and cleaned all the windows and bathrooms. They touched up the paint inside and out. And on September 9th, 2009, we were able to move in. It's a, a really beautiful house that we have uh, loved living in. We've lived in it for almost a year now, and it, it's been fantastic. So this is how they build a house in 2010 in America. So first, I hope you've been able to see how long it takes to build a house in 2010. This house officially started on February 8th, 2009. We moved in on September 9th, 2009, so it took about seven months. Second thing is the incredible number of people who were involved in building houses. And then third, the materials we use, wood and nails and plywood and bricks and so on. I think it'll be very interesting to watch how all of this stuff changes in the decades to come.